Thank you all for coming here tonight. My name is Kamel Zaidi, and I'm a freshman at Boston College. I would like to thank Mr. Chomsky for coming here speaking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. For the past two years, Mr. Chomsky and I have been working together on a book titled, The Struggle in the Promised Land. I first contacted Mr. Chomsky my junior year of high school when I was working on a research project regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Over several years of meeting with Mr. Chomsky, I agreed to respect his opinion and it inspired me to take action. I dedicated my book to informing more people about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. My book, The Struggle in the Promised Land, will be revealing the truth about what goes on in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank and how we can work together and resolve this issue. I hope today's lecture will open your eyes to see the truth about this conflict. And now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce you to a man who needs no introduction, Professor Noam Chomsky. Well, as you know, the, uh, as you just heard, the uh, proceeds, this is in, uh, in order to uh, support the the relief fund for the uh, horrible floods in Pakistan. Uh, the United Nations uh, describes uh, the situation there as a humanitarian crisis of uh, epic proportions. Uh, malnutrition, uh, they say, rivals uh, the worst uh, African famines. The worst of the flooding is in uh, the province of Sindh. Uh, uh, there are Many villages uh, still under water after uh, six months. Uh, this is an extreme, this is actually a province with great inequality. A large part of it is extremely poor, and that's where the worst, uh, that's where the worst um, humanitarian crisis is. And uh, that should remind us that uh, uh, natural catastrophes are not just natural, there's a human element that's kind of brought out uh, dramatically right now by the fact that, um, as I'm sure you've read, there have been huge floods in Australia, uh, large enough so that uh, the third largest city, Brisbane, has been underwater. And there was plenty of damage and some deaths, but it's not a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. Uh, that the difference is uh, the human factor, uh, not the natural factor. And we see that pretty often. Uh, there was a terrible earthquake in um, Haiti with uh, maybe 300,000 people killed. Uh, right at about the same time, there was an even bigger earthquake in Chile uh, with a couple hundred people killed. Uh, there were some differences, but the prime difference is uh, uh, the human factor, the way the countries uh, have been able to develop or have been kept from developing. Uh, and uh, also that uh, uh, should remind us that uh, uh, we have a role in these uh, human tragedies, not a small role. In Haiti, in fact, an enormous role, an overwhelming one. Uh, in Pakistan as well, uh, Pakistan has uh, suffered very severely from uh, a series of uh, pretty terrible uh, dictators, military dictators. Uh, the worst of them was uh, Zia al-Haq, happened to be Ronald Reagan's favorite. Uh, he, under Reagan's watch, he uh, developed nuclear weapons. The Reagan administration pretended they didn't know it so that they could keep funding him. Uh, he also carried out uh, radical Islamization of the country uh, with Saudi help. That's where those famous uh, madrasas come from that teach nothing but the Quran and uh, train people for uh, 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 Islamic terror and Islamic uh, radicalism, all that's, uh, uh, we have a substantial contribution to that. Uh, we've seen some pretty striking examples of it recently, as you may have seen, that it was an assassination of a well-known figure, Salman uh, Tassir, uh, and uh, his assassin uh, was uh, celebrated in the country a uh, huge celebration for the assassin. Tassir had uh, uh, opposed the blasphemy laws that had been used to punish a young woman, and the assassin was uh, cheered and honored. Uh, one of the uh, most, uh, uh, there was a big picture in the press here of 
uh, lawyers, group of lawyers, who were cheering the assassin, young lawyers, and those were pretty much the same young lawyers who were uh, opposing the dictatorship and had called for reform. Uh, now they're praising the assassin of uh, a figure who uh, dared to oppose the blasphemy laws. And they are the graduates of the uh, Zeal Huck, uh, Reagan, uh, Saudi uh, uh, madrasas. Uh, it goes beyond that. Uh, there's now these two contributions of the Reagan administration, the radical, radical Islamization and the nuclear weapons, are coming together. Uh, one of the most uh, dramatic revelations of uh, WikiLeaks uh, was a series of uh, uh, cables from the American ambassador in Pakistan, Ambassador Patterson then, and uh, what she was uh, reporting to Washington was that U.S. actions in Afghanistan and Pakistan are sharply increasing the already uh, overwhelming uh, uh, antagonism to the United States in the country. This is drone attacks, uh, pressures on the Pakistani army to uh, uh, attack the tribal areas, which have, even under the British were kept free from intervention, uh, uh, driving uh, uh, Afghani uh, forces, Taliban, into Pakistan. Uh, all of this is radicalizing the country even more. And she uh, warns Patterson that there's now, for the first time, a non-trivial threat that uh, the uh, uh, fissile material for the nuclear weapons production may find its way into the hands of uh, radical Islamist terrorists. That's kind of the ultimate nightmare. Uh, the nuclear weapons program is sharply increasing more rapidly than anywhere in the world. That's in part a reaction to uh, India's uh, uh, nuclear programs, and we've had a hand in that too. Uh, a couple of years ago, the, uh, first the Bush administration, now the Obama administration, is, uh, uh, broke the, uh, uh, changed American law and, and broke the uh, uh, regimen on uh, transfer of uh, uh, nuclear technology uh, to India. India hasn't signed the non-proliferation treaty, but uh, we now indirectly support the nuclear weapons program by uh, providing them with uh, civilian nuclear technology, which is easily transferable to military uses, and also frees them to use their resources for more military uh, nuclear weapons, and they're doing it. Uh, a year ago, the uh, United Nations Security Council passed a resolution calling on all states to observe the Nuclear uh, Proliferation Treaty. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, India uh, responded to that by, uh, of course, saying no, and also saying that they now have weapons with the yield of the weapons of the superpowers. Of course, that inspires Pakistan to uh, uh, vastly expand its nuclear capacities. Uh, President Obama informed uh, India immediately that this resolution wouldn't apply to them, and also in informed Israel which also doesn't sign the non, hasn't signed the non-proliferation treaty of the same thing. So other countries say, well, okay, us too. Pakistan hasn't signed it either. Uh, events uh, have consequences. And these events, it's partially responsible for the immense uh, poverty and fragmentation of Pakistan, which is leading to the humanitarian crisis of epic proportions, but it's also uh, potentially leading the way to, say, a, a, a dirty bomb in uh, New York City or something like that. Uh, well, the same, same consider considerations show up when we turn to the place in the Arab world, uh, which is uh, uh, the, where the most dramatic events are taking place right now in Tahrir Square in uh, Cairo, and in fact, all of Egypt. And what's happened there is really quite spectacular. I, don't, I can't think of a popular uprising of this uh, scale and uh, courage and dedication, at least in my lifetime. Uh, the, the, there's a rather, it came, it came as kind of a surprise, and the reason was uh, described succinctly by uh, a high Jordanian official who's now in charge of uh, Middle East research for the Carnegie Endowment, MR1 Muasher, uh, he observed that there is an 
operative principle that holds for the Arab world, and we can add much more generally, uh, the principle is that as long as things are quiet and under control, we don't have to worry. As long as the people are just passive and obedient, we can do whatever we like. And in this case, what we like meant uh, supporting the uh, Egyptian dictatorship, harsh, brutal dictatorship. And that's uh, it's an old story. It goes way back. If we want to understand what's happening there, we should learn a little of the history, not too obscure. Uh, back uh, over 50 years ago, under the Eisenhower uh, administration, uh, Eisenhower raised the question with his uh, an internal discussion, long been declassified, uh, and he asked uh, his staff to why there is a campaign of hatred against us in the Arab world, and not among the governments, but among the people. And the National Security Council, a leading uh, planning agency, had came out with a memorandum on this topic, and it said uh, something like this. It said there's a perception in the Arab world that the United States supports harsh and brutal dictators and blocks democracy and development. And we do this because we want to maintain control over their uh, immense energy supplies. And uh, went on to say that the perception is more or less accurate and uh, that's what we ought to be doing. And under the Muasher doctrine, you can do that as long as the people are quiet. Uh, as long as they're quiet, you can support dictators and uh, everything will be fine. Actually, Obama is following the same principle when he went to Cairo for his uh, famous speech of reconciliation with the Muslim world. Uh, that's what won the headlines. What didn't get the headlines is that he had a press conference on the way over. And he was asked, of course, uh, uh, what he, whether he'd have anything to say about the, what the reporter called the autocratic Mubarak regime, which is a bit of an understatement. It's one of the worst dictatorships around. Uh, and Obama said that, uh, he said, I don't like to use labels for folks. Uh, Mubarak's a good man. He's doing good things. He's keeping the situation stable. Uh, he's a friend and an ally, so everything's fine under the Muasher principle. People are uh, quiet, so we'll support our favorite dictators. Torture, uh, repression, uh, fake fabricated elections, and so on. All fine, as long as the people are, are quiet. Uh, 